Oh. Hi. Well, here we are. Welcome to the Men's Forum. I'm your host, Gary Costanza. And tonight we're going to discuss a few important issues, uh, current events, actually, um, some bills that are before the, uh, the Assembly and the State Senate. And uh, to discuss some items with me is uh, my co-host, Anthony Perry. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. How are you, Gary? Yeah, very good, very good. Good. So, um, to be here. Yeah, we're trying to keep up on current events, things in the news lately. Uh, actually, uh, I think we, we actually got some emails, right? And uh, can you read? You're going to read them for us? Yeah, I, I have two, Gary, and we've been waiting a long time for this. I, I know, I know. <laughs> so we're finally time. getting some feedback. Absolutely, and believe it or not. I hope it's good stuff. Uh, well, actually, I know what it is, but... All right, there's actually one of each, okay? <laughs> one, one, uh, okay, all right. All right, we have one good one and one bad, but we'll all start right. with this. All right. Okay, we have an email from George J. And he writes, To Gary and the Men's Forum, bravo on your efforts to enlighten people about the many problems men face in our society. There are advocates for women, advocates for civil rights, advocates for animal rights, advocates for gay rights. Yet, who is fighting for men? Glad you're trying to do it. Keep up the good work, George J. Very any, nice, George J. Excellent. Oh my God. You like that? Any any response to George and the rest uh, of the well, viewers? I, I couldn't have put it any better. That was so good. I was so proud to get that um, because it's showing me that guys are getting it. Some guys are getting it, and uh, they're encouraging us. Um, it's so true. I uh, I realized that so long ago that there's all these groups even. The smallest, odd, most oddball groups fighting for like these minis, you know what, you know, trans, transgendered individuals, um, of course, gays. That that's understandable. Uh, everybody should have equal rights. I agree. But but men, how come? You know, I mean, we're half the population, and and really, nobody's really addressed that problem that men and problems that men have, and uh, we know that men have problems. What do you, right? Well, huh? Yeah, and, you know, and judging by this, you know, it, it's good to see that there are some people getting involved. And yes, viewers out there, please, uh, we encourage you to email, email us on what, whatever it might be, pro or con, and you're certainly invited to, uh, to appear on the show. And we'll, we'll discuss issues, because I'm certainly open to um, new ideas. Okay, Gary. <laughs> Speaking of con, <laughs> we're, we're going to move right along now to, the, to this con, okay? Uh. We have an email from Jane S. to the Men's Forum. I think you are way off the mark when you say men work to get the love of a woman and that women have the choice to work or not. In today's economy, women have no choice, she writes. They have to work. I just don't think what you said was right. Jane S. Any comments to that, Gary? <laughs> well, for sure. I've heard, I, I, I hear this argument quite often when, when I say things like, you know, uh, men work to get to the love of a woman. Many people don't put it together. Uh, it seems like, well, you know, men are working for themselves or, uh, but the point is, um, that is what attracts a woman. We don't generally, men generally don't judge women by what they earn, or if they even have a job. I mean, I, I know I don't, I, I know most men don't. They, they judge women on other things, which that's another, that's a woman's issue probably. Maybe men judge women more on their looks above all else. But that's a woman's problem, that's, that's a woman's issue, and they should, and they're dealing with that. I know feminists deal with that. The, uh, the object, object, objectification of women, or you know, you just look at us for as, as a, just bodies, <laughs> body parts. But now, we're look at, we're looked upon as success objects. How much we earn, and if we don't earn enough, or if we don't even have a job, no, a woman's not going to be inclined to date us and fall in love with us and marry us. They, they sort of expect us to do the taking care of the family. Um, and, and, and 
because we have to support the family, we have to make the big money, we generally can't take a, a, a satisfying job. We have to do what it takes to make that money. So if it's, so we can't, let's say, become secretaries, where it's nice, uh, a nice cushy job. We've discussed this on previous shows, where it's nice and uh, cool in the summer, nice and warm in the winter. You know, you don't get your fingernails dirty. They don't pay good money for those jobs. They pay good money for construction, auto mechanics, tough jobs, jobs people don't generally want to take. So that's why that sort of makes more money. Um, and also, of course, high pressure jobs, businesses. Uh, I, it seems like when we hear about the glass ceiling, a lot of times the media or fe feminist groups portray it as men are like, handed this on a silver platter. Here you go. Here's the promotion. You're a man. You go right in. Guess what? It's not like that at all. We have to bust our t chops to claw ourselves up, up the ladder. It's not easy. That's why men, a lot of times these high pressure uh, businessmen or, or, or professionals put a lot of hours in. And they, you don't know, we don't always make it. So it's tough for men and women to climb up that corporate ladder and I believe, by and large, it's basically even between the sexes. I, I, and and I, I believe it should be. These laws that, that we've passed to ensure that women and men make equal, pay for equal work, I'm all for that. I'm for, for equality. That's what we hear on the, the Men's Forum 4, right, And Absolutely. Equality. <laughs> no more, no less. Um, and That's how about, like, okay, this last like, point of this woman, having the choice. Now, I don't think men have a choice because when the time comes, if the family's financially able to, to survive on one salary, if the family decides that we can make it on one salary, <laughs> almost always it's the man's salary and the woman stays home. The, we don't usually say to the man, society doesn't, and women generally don't, honey, what would you like to do? You don't ever hear that. It's like, it's the man asking the woman, do you want to stay home with the children or do you want to work? You know, it's the woman's choice generally. You, you hardly ever see a man stay home and, and a woman go out and make the big bucks. I mean, if she happens to make the big bucks, that's good. That, that does happen, but I think it's, it's uh, the exception for sure. So Jane S., <laughs> hope I cleared that up for you. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's... What, right? It's, what, do you, what do you say? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with it. But, you know, it's just good that you are getting from both sides. You know, because, um, I mean, you know, simply, if, if everybody thought the same, I mean, we wouldn't have horse racing. But... Um, there you go. Um, this, this is good, because you, you get both angles, and, you know, hopefully we'll get more emails, put them on the air. You could oh, give you a yeah. chance to respond right. to them. And, you know, anybody out there, by all means, write to us. Sure. We encourage that, and, and uh, as I said, if you, ha if you have show ideas, um, we do like to do some bantering. We'll bring all the people on who, who want to discuss the issue. Um, she, this woman, Jane S., though, she does seem like she's a little bit angry. Some, look, all women don't have it easy. I, I definitely don't say that. Women have their own problems, as, as I've said. Uh, and, and in today's economy, it's true. A lot of families, both parents do have to work, but um, I think that may be also a decision being made uh, just just because we want to, uh, it, yeah, it, a lot it, of consumer goods, we, we want to buy. Right, something like that, it, it could really be, we want and, it could be a mutual thing, yeah. you know, thought about by both spouses. You know, because one thing we didn't even touch upon, or that's not even included in this, is how many people, especially here on Long Island, not only are both spouses working, but how many husbands or wives have two jobs? Yeah. You know, so now yep. you're talking, you know, two spouses, yep. three jobs, or even four. Well, times. also, as I've said in other shows, um, when it is the man being the primary uh, uh, breadwinner, either with one job or sometimes two jobs, and the decision is made to, to have the wife stay home, at, you know, taking care of the children, which I, I, I think that's a great decision to have one of the parents home with the children because it's only for a few years, and, and it's so important to have 
a parent home with the children rather than with strangers if possible. It's only for a few years. Um, but the problem arises is that um, the wife the, or the mother becomes the primary caretaker and in event of divorce she's provided with the choice to have the custody because the father in essence is being penalized for working. The more he works the more he's penalized. The more he's estranged from his children or you know all of a sudden he's, he goes into family court and it's um, well he doesn't hardly know the he hardly knows the children. It wasn't his fault. He was providing for his family, as society tells him to do. I believe that that should not be a, the basis for um, custody at all. And uh, we're going to actually outline some bills in front of the State Assembly and, the, and Senate that will address some of those issues. Um, one of them is presuming, presuming um, joint custody. That that New York does not have that in place yet. Um, actually, later I'd like to talk to get back at, back to the work and family, uh, the balance of work and family. We'll get back to the, that later. But um, as I said, let's talk a little bit about these bills. It's very important. I got a letter from um, <clears throat> the, um, the president of the National Coalition of Free Men, and he's uh, alerting all members to um, uh, upcoming bills in front of, like I said, the State Assembly and Senate concerning father's rights. Um, let, me, let me read just briefly from this letter. Um, NCFM's Greater New York Chapter was contacted by Randy Dickinson, a spokesman for the Capital District Chapter of the Father's Rights Association of New York State, requesting our support for some important bills currently pending in the State Senate and Assembly. Members and friends of the chapter who live in New York State are currently asked to write letters in support of this legislation to your state senators and representatives. If you do not live in New York State, please pass this information along to any family members or friends you may have in New York State and heartily encourage them to write letters. Enclosed herewith is information about the legislation provided by the Father's Rights Association along with sample template letters which you can rewrite to state your support in your own words. As indicated by the samples, you should be sending two letters to your New York State Senator and four to your assembly representative. If you do not know who your particular state senator and representative are, the League of w Women Voters can provide you with the information. Just call 212-213-5286. Alternatively, you, if you have internet access, you can quickly and easily find this information on the following, following websites. <clears throat> www.senate.state.ny.us that's for the State Senate. And here's the Assembly website, www.assembly.state.ny.us. Um, this is where we could get information on these particular bills. And also, you could find out your particular Assembly person or State Senator. Um, now, I'm going to briefly go over what bills are being proposed. I'm, I'm bringing this out in a timely manner because I don't know when these bills are set to be debated or, or voted on. So I want to get this information out to um, our viewers and of course members of um, the Father's Rights Groups and uh, the National Coalition of Free Men because I, I think um, I've never been really political but I could see the need for it. You do have to start somewhere. I mean this show and, and, and in groups that I've previously been in, we're on the cutting edge of men's rights. But you do have to, you do, have to do the, the, the legwork, the drudgery, which is dealing with politicians. That's what the Father's Rights Groups do, and also National Coalition of Free Men. They're, they're dealing with the drudgery of proposing bills and getting these, you know, writing letters to politicians. You know, that's not a lot of fun, but we have to start somewhere. So I'm all in support of these, these bills. Whatever they're going to do, we, we need it done. All right. 